Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would come me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Good morning, everyone. And it is, I uh, want to welcome everyone to live stream uh, who, are, who are here. It is a rainy, nasty day this morning, but it is New Year's. And 2020 is officially behind us, and uh, our God is still God. And uh, we just want to worship and serve Him. I need to explain a few things this morning. Uh, normally, we would have um, communion this morning. We will not. I found out uh, around midnight last night that I may have been exposed to somebody who has been exposed, which is pretty much every one of us now, but it's a little bit closer than, than we're comfortable with. So my family's not here. We're going to be quarantining uh, after, after this is over. I've kind of stayed in my corner over here to the side by myself, and, uh, but we wanted to really keep things tight and clean here at Trinity so that everybody feels welcome. Uh, we have been able to, to keep any spread from the church. There has been none, and I just want to thank you all for that. Um, but it's with a heavy heart that it has been an incredibly hard week uh, for this church. Um, Wayne Hackney passed away um, from complications due to COVID uh, this week, and uh, our hearts are with Dottie. Um, and uh, it's just been a, a really, really hard hard week. Uh, Donna Ireland is in the hospital now. Um, they do not think she is going to make it. Uh, on Monday, they're going to have to make a decision as to what to do. Uh, so please just keep praying. Uh, God is a God of miracles.
but uh, it has been, it has been, uh, COVID has been a lot closer than it had been in the very beginning, and, uh, and we're just going to continue to be cautious, we're going to pr- continue to pray for one another, be here for each other through it all. Uh, so let's start off with a word of prayer, just because my heart's with, uh, with Dottie and the Ireland's. So let's, let's pray. Father, I thank you that you're a God who, who does not leave his children alone, especially in times of like this. And Lord, I ask that you would go, that you would hold Dottie close. Lord, things have moved so fast, and this virus and, and this time has been, has been an incredibly difficult one. But God, you are still God. You still reign on your throne. We still have our God. And you love us and you care for us. And we are still yours. And Father, I can't thank you enough for all of that. Lord, be with the Ireland's. Lord, we ask for a miracle. We ask that you would heal Donna completely and raise her up. Father, be with both families as they, as they mourn and are hurt. God, just be. Be there, God. I thank you for how you love us. And Lord, I thank you that you you still want to talk to us. You still want to speak your word to us and, and draw us close. So Lord, may we hear from your word this morning. May we hear straight from your mouth. You are our King and you are our Father. We praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Do me a favor and turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah 29, 11. I really want to encourage this morning. That's my goal. My goal is to really help encourage all of us because it has been a very discouraging uh, week. It's been an incredibly discouraging year, and God does not want his people discouraged. But he calls us to encourage one another. He uses his word to encourage us because we know the full story. If we take these little glimpses of what's going on, we can really lose sight of the big plan that God has. And so I want to talk to you about what his plan is. It's so easy to be caught up in in what's happening with with Wayne and with Donna and uh, with, with all of our present circumstances. I know coronavirus, it almost seems like the virus is the least of our concerns at this point. You know, with all of the other things that are going on in people's lives, this has just been, if you didn't even have the virus, this would have been an impossible year to begin with. Throw this on top of it, and it has been really, really hard. But if we have our eyes and blinders on and just focus at that, then we completely will lose sight of all that is going on. So I want to take the blinders off this morning. I want you to take a deep breath and know that God still speaks. And God still speaks to his children. So Jeremiah 29, 11. It is probably almost everybody's favorite verse. Uh, but before we get there, I have to read verse 10. And we're going to go through uh, verse 13 and uh, part of 14. So, so listen to what God's word says here in Jeremiah 29, 10. This is what the Lord says. I always love those passages that start that way because my ears perk up and I say, okay, this is really, all of Scripture is God-breathed, but when you hear those words, it just does such good to my heart. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. I, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I want to tear this apart a little bit at a time so that we can get the full grasp of, of what God is saying here. I do love that it's God says, listen, just this is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying this to you. I have a plan. I have a plan for you, declares the Lord. We have not gone off the map. 
We have not somehow fallen off the edge of the cliff that God, God was surprised by this virus, that God was surprised by anything that has happened in your life. None of that. God has a plan. But before we get to that verse, that part where we all want a a plan that is good, one that will prosper us, and one to give us hope and a future, those are the the ones we cling to, we put them on our bumper stickers, we, we have them all over the place. I think probably the more encouraging part is what he says beforehand. Remember, this is a, a prophecy passage. This is in Jeremiah. This is, he's talking about the captivity that the people are in in Babylon. They are captured. They have been taken away. And God is promising to bring them back. That they might follow him and that they might hear him. But when he, the first thing he says is this. is When, when 70 years are complete, I will come to you. That, to me, is the most encouraging part of all of this. Not just that God has a plan, but that God has come. That God will come to us. That God has come, God is here, and God is coming. Remember, we talked about prophecy. I need you to put back on your prophecy hat to remember what prophecy is. Prophecy was God speaking to people specifically about a time and event that was happening there. And it was to encourage people and to prepare them for what was to come. But it also gives us a good understanding of the personality of God. So prophecies don't end there. Just like the word of God did not end when he talked to those people. It was always pointing then to Jesus Christ. The culmination of all of history, of God's plan. When he says, I have a plan for you. That plan was not just to rescue them from Babylon. That plan was Jesus Christ come to set us free, to bring us back. And then prophecy goes even further and it talks to us today and every generation because the prophecy is built on the personality of God. And his personality doesn't change. His character doesn't change. So like we talked about God was a way maker when we looked at his prophecy before, we look at this and we realize that God is a God who is with us. Who his goal, his, his plan is to be with you. That he has come and he will come and he has come. And what an amazing promise that that is. So he starts off by saying, I will come to you. It's not that you will find, you will seek me. That's later. It's not that I have this. No, he says, I will come to you. Who does the pursuing? God does. God does the pursuing. He says, I am coming to you. After this allotted time where you need to understand what it's like to not have me in your life. I will come to you that you may then truly understand that you need me, that you need a Savior. We've been talking about that for the past couple weeks, that we spend our entire lives trying not to need him. And God allows things into our lives to say, oh man, we need him. We desperately need him. And so he says, I will come to you. Highlight that that part of the verse. Circle it. And then he says, and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. That he fulfills his promise. He doesn't forget. It's so easy and so many times we treat God as if somehow he forgets what's going on. He's not like us. We forget. He does not. And he says, I will come and I will, I will come to you and I am bringing all of the promises, all of the things that I said would happen, they're here. I'm giving them to you. That's who I am. That's his personality. God has never, ever let one of his promises fail. We can stand firm on those promises like a rock underneath our feet. And as we walk into 2021, if you do not understand that, and you are walking into 2021 with the mentality that somehow God may not be here, that God may have forgotten, that his promises aren't really sure, they're just hopeful things, 
then I'm, I'm sorry, you're not on very steady ground to begin with. And we need to get on that steady ground. And that steady ground is to trust in the promises of an amazing God who says, I, I am coming. I've come for you. And then he continues with our, our favorite part. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Man, highlight that part. How many of us are like, what are you doing to me? How often do we do that to God? God, why me? Why this? Why now? Why? He says this is not to harm you. His goal is not to hurt you. His goal is not to harm you. His goal is not to punish you. I've said it a thousand times. God is not a God who is seeking to punish. He is a God who is dying to forgive. You see that play on words? The die to forgive? That, that was cool. That's my you know, claim to fame. But he's dying to forgive. He's not a God who's out there to harm you. He's not this mean, angry God who is looking to punish. No, he's looking to save. He's looking to redeem. He's looking to bring back. That's what he's telling you. He has a plan to prosper you. Not to leave you hurt and wounded and destroyed. Yet we walked out of 2020 and a lot of people were like, God, where are you? He's right here. And now he goes on. So many people come to me and say, Jeff, I don't know what God's plan is for me. What is his plan? What is this amazing plan he has for me? If God could just tell me what that plan is, I would be good. He does tell us the plan. That's what 12 is. His plan is this, that we will call on him and pray to him and he will listen and we will seek him and find him when we seek him with all of our hearts. His plan is, verse 14, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. That is the plan of God. God's plan. All that is going on is God's plan to bring us to him. That's what this is all about. His amazing plan is that we would seek him and find him. He is not lost. We read this as if somehow God is hiding. This is not a cosmic game of hide and seek. This is God who has not hidden himself from man, but man who has walked away from him. He is the one who seeks after us. In Romans 1 it says that no one seeks, not even one. That we don't seek him. Why does it start off there? It says that he will come to us. We then will be able to look for him, to seek him. We will then be found and we will find him. I love how he talks. That, that this is his plan. His plan is that we will be able to be with him. That we will find him when we seek him with all of our heart. So let me ask you, what is your plan for 2021? Do you have a game plan? It's dangerous not to. It's dangerous to just allow life to lead you instead of living the way God has called you to live and having a plan. So turn in your Bibles over. We're going to jump back into this, so keep a finger in, uh, in Jeremiah. But we're going to go to Matthew. And turn your Bibles to Matthew 13. This is where we are and know the Word. And it's uh, one of my favorite parables Jesus tells. And it's the one he explains so clearly. It's the parable of the sower. And let me read, let me read it to you. It says, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat, sat in it, and while the people stood on the shore... Then he told them many things in parables. And this is one of them. He says, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he scattered the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. 
It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell along thorns which grew up and choked the plant. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what had been sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. (laughs) The disciples asked him, why do you speak to the people in parables? And then Jesus goes on to explain in verse 24 what the parable meant. Jesus told them, oh sorry, uh, uh, skip over just a little bit further, that was the next one. He's in verse 36, he says this, Then he left the crowd and went into the house, and the disciples came to him and said, Can you explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field? Sorry, I read the wrong one yet again. Hold on. Here we go. Verse 18. I am very sorry. Verse 18. He keeps explaining his parables to his disciples. He has to keep trying to explain them. And this is the parable of the, of the sower explained. He says, listen to then what the parable of the sower means here in verse 18. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, what was sown in their hearts. This is the seed that was sown along the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refer to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. So you have this picture of this horrible farmer. This is not a good farmer. Farmers do not just take their seed and go, woohoo, throw it everywhere. The people understood what was happening. When you were going to go sow your seed, you were going to plow your field, you're going to till the land, you are going to make the, the, the soil good and ready to receive the word. You have to remember, parables only have generally one meaning. And we like to go into them and try to take out like 5,000 different meanings. That's not what this is. It's not all about all this crazy stuff, but what he's saying is, okay, how are you going to receive God's word? How are you going to receive it? Is your heart prepared and ready to receive God's word? Or Or do we just allow life to live us? Look at what happens to all of the other seed. It is thrown on the the path and the birds just come and take it away. It never even takes root. Or it takes root and and it's just not, the the soil is not prepared or ready and it it just can't take root and it grows and burns up. Or it gets choked out by the deceitfulness of this world, of, of wealth and the worries of this world. How is the soil of your heart? If you are not preparing it, if you are not ready to receive, what, what do you think will happen? 2021, if we are sitting here saying, I, I have a plan, a plan to seek him, a plan to, to seek him. That's his plan for me. He wants me to find him. So I'm going to seek him. In other words, he says, I'm coming to you. Are you prepared to receive me? Are you ready to receive what I, am, what I am bringing? Or are you just kind of blindly walking around, still in shock about all that is going on? No. No, he says, when you seek me with all of your heart, when your heart is prepared and you are looking and, and you, are, you are ready to receive, that's when you will find me. He says, I'm not hidden. That's not the problem. The problem is not that he's hidden. It's that you're not ready to receive it. You're not ready to take what he has. You're not ready to receive what he has. Your your heart is not prepared. Because of the deceitfulness of wealth, because of the worries of this world, because of shallowness, 
because we've not allowed him to come and prepare the way of our heart. How do we do that? How do we allow God to till the soil of our heart? Because we understand in in Jeremiah that, that we need to be seeking him. We see in Matthew to seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added to you as well. And, and we see in Scripture all the time this seeking, this looking for God, this ability to, to stop and receive when He comes. That's what we mean when we say seek Him. It's not, like I said, looking under every rock to try to find Him. No, it's being ready to receive what He says. And so He says, when your heart, when you're able to seek Me with all of your heart, then you will find Me. And I love that He declares I will be found by you. That's my plan. This whole thing is all about you and me being together. That's what it's all about. But what is the soil of your heart? What is going on in there? Is it, is it, is it ready for him? Is it ready to be in that relationship? Or is it shallow? Is it hard? Is it ready? And that's what we really need to talk about a bit this morning. How how do we receive them? What is your plan? Your plan should include five different pieces. How that looks, I don't know. But I'm going to show you five different pieces. One, God's Word. If you are not spending time meditating on His Word, reading God's Word, you will not have your heart ready. Because what he is saying in this parable is what, very simple. He says the word is given to you. The word is Jesus. The word is his, is his plan. The word is him. God's word speaking to you. He wants you to know him. He has written it down. All scripture is God breathed. We need to be in his word. We can't just say, okay, well, I'll come on Sunday and I'll hear And that's all good. If you are not reading God's word, you will not have a depth of soil. You need to be reading God's word because as you till it, he begins to repeat things to you constantly. How many of you have have gone into scripture and you were reading scripture that week and then Sunday you come in and the pastor comes up and says something that has something to do exactly with what you were reading? That was God preparing the soil of your heart. But you can't do that if you're not in His Word. We do this to ourselves all the time. We say, oh, you know what? Yeah, it's been a busy, crazy week. I haven't spent any time in God's Word. But I'm going to hear it when I come in on Sunday. Well, you're only going to get this much when God has prepared you for this much. So the first goal you should have is some sort of plan to be in God's Word. To get God's Word. And I know a lot of us will sit here and say, but I don't know how to read it the way you do. You have the same Holy Spirit. Read. (laughs) Allow Him to open it to you. Pray. Say, God, will you open it to me? I'm not really excited when people just flip open the Bible and say, okay, God, show me your Word, and then read. That can be a very dangerous thing. Have a plan. We as a church are going through the Bible using Know the Word. Join in with us. If you don't know how to, go to our website. It'll explain how. Just click on the little thing that says Know the Word. It'll show you right where we are. Go get the app, mission119.org. If yours isn't working, update it because they just put in a new update. And if you didn't update, it's not working. So please update. But there's a, that's the plan we have for you to be in God's Word. But maybe you you just want to take a book and read through a book of the Bible. Start in Matthew or start in John or or go through Revelations or, or dive into Hebrews or spend some time swimming around in the Old Testament. But find some time where you get to look at the character of God. That you get to see who He is. That's the word. The other the, the next one is worship. We'll use the two W's first. Word and worship. You will see everywhere God shows up, people begin to worship. What worship does is is it points our hearts and 
gives a, a, a position before God. We bow our hearts all day long to many things. We worship a lot of stuff. Anything you're like, ooh, that's worship. What worship is, is us intentionally bowing our hearts to Him. For, for many of us, worship is done through prayer, uh, I mean, through, through singing and, all of, and, and through that. Some worship is done through just spending time alone and seeking, crea- seeking what God's, God has done in His creation and just glorifying and praising Him and giving thanksgiving. Whatever you come up with your plan for worship, how will you worship? For me, I put on, on Spotify, I go in and I have a playlist of worship songs that, I, that we cover. And we, we, re, we go through them and we look at that and we listen to them and, and I allow God to just go. I, in the car, I'll turn on worship music and just surround myself with something that keeps my heart bowed towards Him. For some of you, you're like, I, I don't like any of this worship music stuff. Then start a thanksgiving journal, a praise journal for Him. Write in it all the praises that you have, you have for Him, for who He is. That journal will be filled in a week. And just meditate on Him and who He is. Have your heart bowed to who He is. Seek Him. The next one, we did word, worship, prayer. To spend time with Him talking with him. I get asked all the time, doesn't God already know what I'm going to pray when I go to pray? Yes, nine times out of ten, I know what's going on in my kids' lives. I just want them to talk to me. I just want to be with them. And when we talk to God and we, we pray and we are, we're in front of him, it's us and him. It's the two of us communicating. It's the two of us talking. I can present my request to him because he is a God who gives good gifts that what what I am concerned about, he's concerned for. Spend time in prayer. That's how we seek him. In in uh, back in Jeremiah, he says, listen, you will come and you will pray to me. That's where it begins. You will come and you will reach out to me. You will call out to me. You will call on my name. I'm right here. But you will call, you will have your face turned towards me, and you will call on me. When we seek God, we are seeking his face. You can't turn your back to something you're looking for. Does that make sense? You can't have your back turned to something that you're looking for. So if I'm looking for the guitar, right, this is probably the dumbest way to try to find it. What do I need to do? I need to turn and face what, oh, it's over here. (laughs) I need to turn and face towards what I'm going for. I need to turn towards it. What prayer does is it turns us towards Him. What worship does is it turns us towards Him. It aims us the direction our hearts need to go as we seek Him. When we read God's word, it turns our hearts towards him. Another thing that, that we need to have in our action plan is fellowship. Time together with people who are good for you, who will point you to Christ. Not just fellowship, not just getting together with people, but getting together with people who are, who are brothers and sisters in Christ, who, who when you talk about The things of God together. You can edify one another, encourage one another, and press each other together. This is why small groups will continue to be a big push here at Trinity. We need to be getting together. COVID has made it almost impossible to do this consistently and well. But we still have a telephone. We still have the ability to Skype one another, to Zoom, whatever. We have thousands of different ways to continue to encourage and be with one another, to fellowship together, to come together. Because I know 
the thing that points me the closest to God are the people that I'm surrounded by. My wife will tell me when, when I'm heading off on a wrong direction, she'll point me in the right direction. My mom and dad who live literally next door to us, if, if, I am, if I'm losing sight, are constantly there to keep pulling back on. Friends surrounded by people who are like, oh no, Jesus, oh, oh Jesus. And throughout the week, we can forget. We need one another. We need each other desperately. Another thing we need to do is to serve. Serving brings our hearts in line with Him. Because God, Jesus didn't even come to be served, but to serve. That we are to imitate Him. That we are to do what He does. But one thing that serving does so incredibly well is it takes our eyes off of ourselves and allows us to see people and to see the world as God sees. When I am serving only me, I cannot see the world correctly. But when, when I serve and I'm about His kingdom, then, then that's where where I'm aimed. That's where I go. I, I said it last week, we have, and once Corona is over, we're going to be sending people on missions trips again and getting people into, into really weird places where you don't speak the language, you don't speak any of that, but you are just serving your God. It's just you and Him pouring out. There are plenty of opportunities to serve here at Trinity. We have thousands of kids that need to know Christ that need people who love them and care for them to help build a foundation. We have a worship team. We have, uh, we have a, an usher ministry. We have a, a ministry in the back that you don't even see, but is making sure that those who are online get to, get to hear and see. We have people who are praying with one another. We, we need people who, who come and magically cut down trees and, and lawns. And, and it's just amazing all the different opportunities you have to get outside of yourself and to serve one another. And that may be something simple as just praying for others. But to serve and to get outside of who we are. If you come to church and you, you just come and you just sit, you're missing all of it. If you come and you look around and you say, you know what, I want them to know Christ more. I want them to know Christ more. How can I do that? I can do it with a word of encouragement. I can do something by praying for them. I can do something by using the gifts I have to come and lead them in worship. I can do something. But who is you suddenly not focused on? Me. And I know most of you are sitting and saying, well, I don't have any skill or any talent. You are wrong. God has gifted each of you. Each of you. No, we are not going to bring just everybody up here to sing. There's a reason I'm not up here singing. But we, we need each other to keep moving. There's a whole contingent of people here in this church that make meals for people and serve that way. There's, a, there's 35 of you who were calling people throughout the pandemic because you were tasked to call and to pray with people and to check on people and find out how they're doing. Serving. What is your game plan for seeking God? Knowing that you will find Him in 2021. You have found Him. You, he is here and you will find Him. That is His plan. That you continually go deeper in and further on. As C.S. Lewis constantly says. That God wants a relationship with us, not just we just find him, but that we continue to find him. That we continue to find deepness in him. Isn't that the goal of all of our relationships? I could be friends with, with, with Eric and just say, okay, Eric, you know, we've become friends, that's good. And that's it. Or we could say, hey, you want to get together? Do you want to come? Do you want to draw closer in our relationship? In every relationship, the goal is to get more and more intimate, more and more deeper in. And that's our goal. That's our goal with Him. And so 2021, let's go deeper in. But you can't do that by accident. All of the, the, the places on the path that were not prepared 
didn't grow. But the places were, that were tilled and prepared and ready to receive, to seek, found and received. And this morning, I pray that you begin a plan. And I would write it down. Write the five things. Word, worship, prayer, fellowship, and service. Write those five. Have a plan for every piece of those so that it is well balanced. Some of you are very good with fellowship and worship, but not very deep in His Word or prayer. Well, let's spend time working on that. And if you need help, that's what we're here for. Come and see me. Come and see the elders. Come, come. We will walk each other through this that we might have a chance to grow deeper in as we seek God. For He has a plan for you to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And that plan is Him. That plan is a relationship with Him that you will find Him, declares the Lord. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for Your goodness and Your mercy. Lord, I ask that You would protect everyone here. Lord, it is a frightening time. And Lord, I thank You that You have been so good to Your children. You are an amazing God. Lord, will You help us draw closer to You. Help us to seek You, knowing that Your plan is that we will find You. You're an amazing God, Lord. We praise You. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Last thing I want to say before we go is live streaming will start at 9 o'clock from now on. So if you are at home, live streaming is going to start at 9 o'clock. We're going to do the worship time. Everyone's been clamoring for it. They say it's not fair. We really want worship. It's going to be a little hairy in the beginning as we get used to it and get good at it, just like everything else we've started. So bear with us. But if you are home and live streaming, start listening now at 9 o'clock instead of 9.30. And we will all be doing this together. So very good. Worship team, will you come up and close the service?